Hello, people. You see, uh, this video you're about to see is very important. I am very happy that I, you know, I laid hold on this video. Uh, I am very happy that a person like Donnie McLaughlin uh, made mention of this same topic because I remember some weeks back I, I, I said something about the same topic about the gospel music and how it has turned out to be in this present generation. Now, I was using the Nigerian industry as a contest, or rather the Nigerian gospel uh, uh, music in, uh, uh, industry as a contest. Now, yes, there is the music industry. We cannot run away from that. And the, anything music has to pass through that. But don't forget, the Bible said there is a way that cement right to us humans, to us human beings. We can say, yeah, this thing they right, this thing they correct, they okay. But to God, you know, they okay. And do you know one thing that God doesn't like? Pride. Pride. Not forget saying that that nine being the number one thing will make God drive Satan. Because he was so proud. And this has eaten deep into our gospel musicians and our singers. I'm happy that this is coming out. This is not even Africa. But I'm, 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 I'm speaking from the, point, uh, the African point of view. I have had experiences, personal experiences. Because actually I was into gospel music then. Not that I have gone out of it. But I don't refer myself as a gospel singer anyway. So I understand the scenario. I have I have gone to minister in churches where other gospel singers I don't mention names. These are names where you and I know they are big names now. Gospel musicians where you say, Man, they are arrogance, eh, brother. They're arrogance. Let's not get it twisted. It is an it is it is a ministry before it becomes an industry. The industry is where you channel it, you get prosperous in terms of resources, money when they come enter inside. That is where the industry comes in. But first, it is a ministry. It is a ministry. You cannot take it away from what it is. It is a ministry. So whereby the the things we make can be ministry, you did downplay on that one. And lay serious concentration on the industry, then we have a problem. Just listen to Donnie McClurkin and then uh, God bless us all. Because uh, the thing is, if you really want to, if you really want to please God, you want you want to, you know, you want to do the gospel, do the gospel. I beg. Because there is no difference between a singer. And a preacher. I mean, the difference is that one talks and the other one does the talking through singing. They both pass his message to the people to bless the people for God. So if you condemn one way they talk, they preach for pulpits, say if they concentrate very much on money and they decide not to blame the one way they sing, we see they concentrate much. Or money then you are i'm sorry you are a complete hypocrite thank you god bless you if you can watch now um the industry called gospel music today you see that a lot of it is solely for the aggrandizement it is for the awards it is for the popularity and we use gospel as as the as the foundation gospel music, but it, we're building all of this um, carnality on top of it. Who can get an award and who can get the, 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 the television spot and who's going to be on the televised award show and, and the like. And that becomes the goal. You go to the award shows now and you, and you, and you um, platform all of the gospel artists and all the new gospel music and then you go to the reception afterwards and it's drinking and secular music. They got an open bar. They play nothing but secular music at a gospel award show. 
So this is this has become the norm because we've let down the guard. The the the, 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 the guardians have let down the standard. And now there's another standard raised where it's all according to what you think is right. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end of those ways are the ways of death. So that's where we find ourselves. We're singing a great message, but we're not living a great life. Mm -hmm. So the word to those who look up to you, respect you, who uh, believe in you that may not know the way, like you say, the generation of today, mm -hmm. So that they can, if they're on that path, what would you say to them to abort that mission? Oh, man, there's so much to say because there's so much to institute and there's so much to dismantle. Yeah. And this generation has risen up that doesn't know God really in that sense. There's a lot to say. The first and foremost thing that I could tell anybody in the multiple generations that are underneath me is let Jesus Christ really be the Savior. Let him really be the one who sanctifies us. Let's learn what sanctification really is. Let's come out from among them and be separate from them and not touch the unclean thing. And, and he said, the truth, everybody says, you know, he, God is every, uh, we're all God's children. We're all God's children. That's not what Second Corinthians says. He says, only when you come out from among them and only when you're separate from them, he said, and then I will be a father to you. It's conditional. And then I will be a father to you. And then you will be my sons and daughters because you've come out from sin. You are living like me now in holiness. So we've got to get back to holiness. Live like God. And stop making excuses for the carnality that we've held on to that we wanted.